Hey guys, how are all of you guys doing? I hope you had a super duper weekend. We, it was pretty quiet around here. I worked all day Saturday and yesterday we just spent time. I did laundry, went grocery shopping. We tried to repair the sink um, in my bathroom. It's dripping and after spending two hours on it, we thought we had it fixed, but I just washed my wigs and no go. It's still a mess. So it was all leaking again. Thank God I didn't put my stuff back under. My husband wasn't sure if it was truly fixed. So we may have to call a plumber in. I don't know why they can't make things consistent, but they don't. So my video today, um, I decided to make some changes in my maintenance plan. So I went to the store to get some foods that I wanted for my new way of eating. And I've been watching a lot of videos and re reading and researching low carb, high fat diet. And I know on the surface that sounds kind of crazy. Um, but I've talked about this somewhat in my other videos. If you're not eating carbs, if you don't and you've already depleted your fat, the excess fat that you have through your diet, then your only other options are to get your energy through fat that you eat or waste away um, because your body will take energy from your muscles. So I decided that I'm definitely going to go grain free for a number of reasons and I'm going to do it for a month but after watching um, a series of videos from this doctor that I watched today. I am going wheat free forever. Um, I'll link all the videos that I think are important and that have given me a good education below. Um, but, and what I'm talking about, this isn't junk science, you guys. I mean, this is the real deal. There's studies, um, medical studies, research data that shows that this stuff is true and um, I tend to be skeptical. It took me a long time to get on this bandwagon. My daughter wanted me to get on it about a year ago and I was resistant until I started um, watching some of these videos and like I say there is data to back it up as well as thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people's story that support it. So basically my diet is going to be meat, you know, beef, pork, chicken, fish, seafood. I'm not going to limit other than organ meats. I don't eat organ meats, um, but, but that's just my personal preference. And before I get into this video too far, I do want to say this is not a hate forum. So if you're thinking about leaving some anger, hate ridden comment below, just know right now I'm not going to tolerate that because that's not what this is about. And if you do, it will be deleted. Um, I'm not here to get into an argument with anyone. I'm just here to share information that I've learned that I'm going to apply to my life. Take from it what you want if you don't buy into it, but if you don't believe it, that's fine. I don't really care. Do what you want to do. But what I want to do is if people are interested in at least learning more about this, then I want to give them the basic information that I know and then link the videos below so you can watch the experts who really know what they're talking about. Um, and I'm just going to tell you my understanding of it. And I'm not guaranteeing that my understanding is 100% correct, but um, I am going to go grain free. From what I have learned, grains don't like to be digested. They have uh, not only, well most grains have gluten in them and that creates problems, but gluten isn't the only problem and um, wheat is the huge culprit. So anyway, there is a substance in the grain that is called lectin that causes um, a lot of 
problems physically for us humans. Our intestines don't like it. Um, and it's theorized that it creates, can create a lot of problems such as headaches, um, increased arthritic problems, leaky gut syndrome. I just kind of wonder, is my microscopic colitis due to leaky gut syndrome due to eating grains and wheat? And not only are grains a problem for digestion and your immune system, etc., and your overall health, but wheat has, through the years, it has naturally mute, mutated. And then in the 60s, according to the six videos that I watched by this physician, um, in the 60s there was the fear that the world's population would exceed its ability to feed the people. So in the U.S., with good intentions, they managed to manipulate wheat to make it more prolific. So they got more of it. It was stronger in certain ways. It didn't fall over. It stood upright. And in doing so, it created some changes that are not beneficial to us humans. And in fact, I think that they pretty much have proven that wheat contains an opiate substance which causes us to truly become addicted because the substance in wheat attaches itself to the opiate receptors in the brain causing us to want more and so it's kind of like the tobacco industry and how they manipulated the levels of nicotine and these other chemicals in the tobacco to get people addicted a lot faster and um kind of the same thing with the food industry and wheat is in everything and what happens is you eat the wheat the opiate attaches to the receptors the opiate receptors in your brain and you just want more and more and so therefore you're eating more and it just causes you to get fatter and fatter and fatter and then if you try to get off of wheat you actually go into withdrawal and he he talks about how most people withdrawal takes three to five days and you can be pretty miserable but once people come out of withdrawal they feel wonderful and since I went off of the ideal protein the main program and went into maintenance I have had some wheat and I have had some oats and some other grains um, I don't think I had any rice but after learning what I've learned. I'm going grain free. You don't need grains for carbs. And there's a debate whether or not you even need carbs. But if you eat vegetables, you're going to get carbs. You're going to get all the carbs that you need out of the vegetables and fruit. Um, I'm going to keep my fruit intake low, probably mostly to berries. My goal is going to be to stay under 40 to 50 grams of carbs a day through fruits and vegetables and nuts. Um, I'm not even going to get into the seeds that um, certain people with the paleo diet recommend because a seed, while it's not a grain, I don't know if seeds kind of react the same way. I have to research that um, more. I'm going to give up legumes, which includes my beloved peanuts and peanut butter. Um, I got some almond butter, or I made some almond butter at the store with the uh, um, with the little grinder and that's actually really good so almond butter um, cashews pistachios almonds walnuts I bought some almonds and some walnuts I also bought coconut flour and I made hang on I'm gonna show them to you I made these yesterday. I was just experimenting after looking at some different recipes. I wanted to get coconut flour and um, almond flour to make these what are called paleo pancakes and they looked wonderful. So I did find the coconut flour which is just basically ground coconut um, but I did not and it's organic supposedly but I they were out of the um, almond flour and then I got some chopped walnuts and this is what's left of the almond butter. I didn't get a lot because I didn't know if I was going to like it or not, but it's actually really good. It isn't as sweet as peanut butter, 
but oh, it's really good. So what I did, and you know, I didn't have my um, almond flour, but I took the coconut flour and the almond butter and I mixed it together and I actually mixed it with my hands because that was the best way to combine them. And I added some of the chopped walnuts and then I melted, I debated about putting in um, some Hershey's semi-sweet chocolate chips because they say, you know, you can have a little chocolate and the semi-sweet is dark chocolate partially. So I just lightly melted the semi-sweet chocolate and put it on top and I made these little almond coconut bars and they're, or balls and they're pretty good. My husband said he'd like it better if it was sweeter but it's fine with me. I don't need things to be super sweet all the time. I am still using my sugar-free coffee syrup and stevia and, and certain things. I will continue to do sugar-free but so I made those and they're really good. Um, I can't wait to make the paleo pancakes but I have to get my almond flour. Now this wasn't cheap. You know none of this stuff is the stuff that's good for you. Unfortunately that's not a problem for me. Um, and I recognize it could be for some people but I would just really encourage you, if you have any interest in this at all, just to look at some of the videos that I linked below. And if you're going to give up something, if you think, well, you know, maybe cutting back on the carbs is a good idea, really look at grains and especially wheat. I am never going to intentionally or knowingly eat anything wheat again. I think I told my husband, I think I'm pretty, you know, I didn't since the initial part of my ideal protein diet I really haven't craved carbs that much and um, and I think it's because once you get past eating them all the time and getting the high blood sugar spikes and raising your insulin levels and storing fat you know you eat something that's high in carbs your blood sugar goes up, your insulin goes up, your insulin causes your blood sugar to come down and it also causes you to store fat and insulin is really kind of the key to this whole science and that's my understanding. So those are the changes that I'm making. Oh, I eat eggs, whole eggs, egg whites, full fat cheese, you know, butter, um, and some people say that um, if you just eat until you're satisfied, then you don't have to count calories or grams. Well, I'm going to keep track of my carb grams because I want to stay in ketosis. But I assume that once I get, trying to get it down pat, I won't have to do that so much. Um, but your body will automatically get, say, you know, you have, you'd reach satiety and you should be good for a few hours. You shouldn't have to eat every two hours. And um, I mean, just the people that it's worked on, it's unreal. And the the old way, the low fat, high carb diet isn't working for people. Look at all the fat people that we have and look at all the people with diabetes and kids with diabetes. And I'm convinced it's due to the sugar. Oh, one point that I do want to this just blew me away. I was watching the six videos um, about wheat and the glycemic index of whole wheat bread is higher than table sugar. It raises your blood sugar higher than table sugar. Wow. If no other reason to not eat whole wheat crap, that's could be the main one for you, whatever works. So, and again, like I say, if I start getting negative comments, I mean, you can say, you know, I think it's silly and I'm not interested. 
that's okay, but I don't want you to get on here and start lecturing me and start putting nasty comments out there and name calling and because that, that's not going to fly. I don't tolerate that on my channel. So, and I know my subscribers, my loyal subscribers, they're not like that anyway. So, okay, you guys, um, like I say, I'm certainly not an expert at this. I've been really delving into this in the past week. So I'm a newbie. I'm still learning. And I'm going to refer you to the experts in the videos that I link below. But thanks so much for watching. And um, here's to your good health. And I love you all. Okay, you take care. I'll talk to you soon. I'll um, I have my wigs washed and now I'm letting them dry. And once I get them styled and everything, then I will finish up my video. Okay, bye. And you'll know what I'm talking about eventually. Bye. <laughs>